Hello once again, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net and welcome to our third part of interior series. In this part we'll be adding some details to give the industrial feel to our empty factory space. Now that we have our empty factory, let's make it a little bit more interesting and, and fitting into our industrial interior vibe. We'll be adding a metal staircase here in the corner of the room and also the division walls with the glass panels here and also some ventilation, radiators, stuff like that to make the room feel more lifelike. We'll have a look at some cool Archipack tools for this, for this staircase and it's really cool and efficient so we can add a stair. Just let's go to our left panel here for the Archipack or you can use the Alt-A menu there's an Archipack menu here, so just add stairs, or here, add stairs, just the same. There are a few types of stair, like a rounded one, the U-shaped, we'll just use a, an L-shaped. So the second one is called wood over concrete, because this is uh, like set up for this kind of material, but we'll just make a, a metal staircase. Uh, so We'll need to customize this a little bit. Let's first go to the orthographic view from above so that we can see really the layout of our stair. Let's rotate it 90 degrees and another another 90 degrees. So the stairs will go like a little bit to this side and then going up to the opening in the ceiling here. But right now let's go here to the settings of our staircase. You can like pretty much customize almost everything in a staircase. First, let's take care for the general dimensions. So the width of the staircase is like let's make it like smaller. A meter point two is okay, I believe. And the height will need to match our height of the room. So let's check. We uh, I believe that we set it to like three and a half meters. So let's make the staircase also this high, type in three and a half meters right and as you can see right now it's just the right height from the floor to the ceiling and let's also take care for the sizes of each part of, of the staircase so let's go to manipulate and let's type in manually the sizes of the of the parts of staircase so here we'll go for like three and a half meters so a longer piece and here it will be just one meter just like that just a few steps here and later on we'll use a space beneath the staircase as a place for our bathroom and we'll have a supporting column here just to make a division of this room, we'll, we'll, we won't like much focus on this part. We'll focus just on the bedroom here. So, um, adding also a wall here, division wall uh, with the glass panels. And also we'll add a curtain here, so that if the owner just wants to separate from the rest of the apartment, like visually, and close the room or just like make it black out dark to so maybe watch a movie or just listen to music in complete darkness or so I think the dimensions are pretty cool and let's take a look right now on the staircase itself so right now it's just like a concrete staircase and we want this to be really an open like a metal staircase so let's just uh, see some parameters let's make the steps open and you can see that these are just right now just the stairs but we'll need also the support the supports on the sides so we we'll need to add the string it could be wooden staircase so you have all the dimensions that you can set up here and also we don't want the handrail to be this way exactly so we can change the profile here like a circular we can go with a square one it's okay 
and we don't want this, these glass panels here, so we'll turn those off. Let's make it a single R view so that we can see it more clearly. It's already pretty cool, and we want this to be like corrugated steel for the steps and just the black, black steel for, for the other elements. We can also make the subs on the left and the right. I wanted uh, also to make this uh, rail uh, the same width as uh, support and the supports, so let's make the width of it. Uh, this rail to make it 4 centimeters, and also I'll connect it later on because uh, you can see it ends uh, empty. Now let's just tweak uh, the little settings here, like the width of, uh, widths of elements, and check out different looks. Yeah, play around with it until it looks fine for you. So I think it's cool enough for us. Maybe uh, it's a little bit too, like for metal stairs, it's too thick. I already like the design, so right now we can take care for the opening in the ceiling here. Let's uh, make an object cube, so we can use this two meter height cube to like check uh, on uh, check the height over the steps, so that the person walking up the stairs doesn't hit the ceiling. We'll just use this object as a cutout for our ceiling, so let's strew this a bit up. Let's select our ceiling and add a boolean modifier with a difference. And let's pick our cube. Now we can't see anything, but it's already cut out a uh, hole. And to be able to see this, we'll just move this object to a different layer. It's an invisible layer, so we don't see it really and it made a hole in the ceiling. We won't like much. So now let's take a look uh, at the materials that are pre-installed, pre-applied here uh, by the add-on, so if we just like change the color here and go to the material view you can see that the wood is really uh, the material used for the top of the stairs and the sides. Stair metal is used for the rails and that's the only visible materials here right now, so we'll probably need to change the stair wood to, let's maybe change this name to, like, corrugated steel. And let's just pick and apply a stair metal to the sides, so that it's the same metal used as for the railings. You want it to be, like, black painted metal, so let's choose these. Let's assign the material. Now just select one face with the material. Select similar. So Control I to select the inv to invert the selection, and we want all of this to be this corrugated steel. Now let's go and make the materials quickly. And the rest of it we can remove these materials because we won't be needing those. Let's quickly uh, correct the geometry here of the supports and the uh, connection with the, the handrails. Let's first take care about this corrugated steel material. Let's use nose for this and let's add a principled shader. If we go input a checker texture, you can see that it's already UV unwrapped, so we don't have to 
worry about the UV unwrapping. Let's just delete it and let's uh, control shift T find uh, the right material. So we'll use these files from CC0 textures, uh, a diamond plate. It's already looking pretty cool. We could perhaps correct the scaling a little bit because uh, the elements seem quite big. So if you press Alt over all these uh, scale values, you can ch change them all at once. Let's set the value as 2. Already looking pretty cool and more more lifelike and the second material will be just a simple almost black let's not make it perfectly black just dark gray and with a roughness to maybe point three and the metallic uh, let's check the preview this looks kind of like Like painted metal, uh, so we'll just add a little bit of a little bit of procedural imperfection to the surface. Let's texture this with a noise texture, and let's connect uh, this noise texture to uh, a bump mapping texture and to the normal input, and also let's uh, connect the viewer node to see. The texture itself, how it looks like. Let's have a look at this rendered. Yeah, I think the structure compared to the scale of, uh, of the object can be even like bigger. So let's make maybe make it even 700 and like it more. Better to have some uh, some of these small details here and there, so uh, so that the surfaces aren't just like super perfect. Uh, okay, so now let's quickly correct this part here. So to just quickly add a support column, let's maybe copy the copy a part of, of our ceiling as it's already textured. Duplicate this and just press P. To separate the selection, and we can uh, quickly model with a mirror modifier. Make a closed uh, column from out of this. We have something like a support column. Let's quickly quickly edit this a bit, uh, position it in the right places, and also correct uh, the UV unwrapping for the column. And there we go. Let's also add the concrete material to this wall, the upper floor wall. And let's quickly unwrap the object so that the texture scaled correctly. And let's quickly check the rendered preview to see how it looks. I think it's looking pretty cool. Okay, so now we got our staircase ready. Let's add a ventilation tube here. So to do that, we'll just start with a simple circle. Let's add this as a curve object. Let's scale it down. And let's extrude this. And let's add a metal material to this one. We'll use a principal PSDF shader as usual. The curve here, let's convert to mesh. And let's go here and really mark seam. And now we can unwrap it. Uh, but we want to check if this texture is really applied correctly, so let's uh, change this to UV Image Editor, split this and have our material view here and material nodes here. Let's give it a checker texture just to see if, that, uh, if there's this uh, correct aspect. 
Oh, it's uh, on the scale. Let's crank it up to 55, maybe, so that we can see how it scales here and there. And you can see that there are some strange, strange things going on here. Let's make sure that uh, UVs are used. So. So right now let's just unwrap it once more. You can see that the scaling is not pretty much not correct. It's a little bit stretched. So let's see the settings of the unwrapping here. We use a conformal method. It gives us a good uh, scaling of the texture. So right now we can safely plug this here and be sure that the texture is correctly applied and we can see already that it's looking much much better uh, if you take a look at photos of this kind of ventilation uh, tubes they, they have this spiraling structure so to get the, the spiral let's first enable a useful add-on and it's called add curve extra objects It's also pre-installed in blender so you just have to enable this and save user settings and then in the add menu we have an extra curve menu objects like there are many cool things here but what we will use is curve spirals and we have a few of those like torus that's something like a phone cable but we need really a archimedian spiral let's rotate it let's use the cursor snapping and scaling to align our spiral with the tube. You can see right now it's just a curve, so let's uh, give, some, give it some bevel. In the geometry tab here, let's add, let's add a bevel. And as you can see, it added a nice geometry. Let's make this feel full, just like that. Just position our cursor here, select all these and scale on the y axis. Now let's quickly model uh, the ending of the tube. And let's make auto smooth so that the sharper edges are considered sharp and also. Add a bevel modifier to this one. Make it five millimeters, maybe. Let's also add the same. Let's call this material metal tube, and let's give the same material to this one. And let's also model a small detail on the ending of the tube. And also, we need the part uh, that's letting the air out. So let's super quickly model this, just adding a simple cube and placing it uh, near the ending of our tube. So we'll just inset this face here, extrude it some more inside. Let's separate these faces and make, a, and we'll make a grid from this. Let's subdivide it a few times and let's just add a wireframe modifier so that we get a nice grid. Maybe let's subdivide it once more so the grid is thicker and it's looking pretty decent. We can also unwrap this and apply uh, the same metal material as for the rest of the tube. And let's also give it a bevel modifier. We got a ventilation, so let's add some more cool details to make the interior a little bit more alive. So. Let's add radiators under the windows, just to keep the tutorial shorter, 
I'll just um, give you a link to download the radiators if you don't want to model them yourself uh, so you can append this and right now we'll just append this uh, to our file as a ready asset so I have the object already as a group it's called radiator so let's append this and grab and you can see it's looking just like that and kind of like old-fashioned radiator just duplicate this here okay so we'll quickly model uh, the vision wall so I will make a sliding door with glass panels and a, and a metal beam above it so let's quickly model this let's add a plane And we can scale it to make it fit the scale of our scene. And we can enter the dimensions manually. Yeah, I'd like it to be somewhere here. And just let's extrude this all the way up here. Let's also quickly correct the position of the column. We'll use the same material as for the stair metal, so let's just apply this stair metal to this one. I think it's cool. And now let's add the uh, panels. First, let's add just simple planes. Let's position them where we want. So let's make loop cuts. That's so that we have four parts that will be our panels. Let's now select uh, the middle ones and press P to separate the selection. So now, uh, now let's also separate this and now we have separate panels for the sliding doors and for the ones that will not move. These ones will be like, fastened to the construction so, so this one let's move a little bit to the inside of this and this one let's move it to the inside of the room. So there's a difference uh, between these and these uh, can serve us for uh, for the glass panels and let's make the frames right now so let's duplicate these and let's subdivide it. We can do, th do this with, with loop cuts Control R all as well so just like that to have our square panels here. Let's go to the singular view Let's select all of the faces and inset them just a tiny little bit, like 0 0.02, just to have a small outer frame. And now let's well, let's change the face select and extrude individual, just like that. And now let's change the pivot point to individual origins and scale the faces. And there we go. Let's remove those faces and just let's extrude just like that. And now let's also extrude the outer frame here just a tiny little bit so that we get the more variation in the frame and the outer frame and the inner frames are different. So just to add some detail to, to the element. Maybe let's position this correctly to the glass frame here. 
And now let's quickly copy the fra uh, separate one frame to make it a separate object and copy this to the other panels. What we really want is also to, to move this panel a little bit to the side so that we have the sliding door. Now to make our sliding door a little bit more interesting and uh, fitting into the industrial vibe, we'll make it uh, with a revealed construction of the tr roller wheels on track that will be visible from the room. So we'll start with just a simple plane, rotate it, scale it down. Let's quickly model the element, just uh, go into the orthographic view. Let's go to edit mode, change our selection here, and let's position our cursor here. Let's quickly subdivide this. Let's make a spin with this edge, and let's set it to a negative uh, 360 degrees. Eight steps, I think it will be okay. Extrude these, turn on the auto smooth. And for um, adding some like bolts and stuff, there's a cool add-on called Bolt Factory. Let's save user settings and let's add a bolt. And you have some uh, options in the left panel to customize the bolt, and you can also make a knot or different shapes of this. But we'll just use the simple X bolt. And we won't really need to, like all the thread parts, so we'll just use the cap that's visible. Let's quickly scale it down and position it on our metal plate. Let's quickly remove doubles and remove this face as well, so that we have a cleaner model. So let's just quickly uh, model the rest of the of the track as it's, as it's uh, just simple box modeling. So let's quickly fast forward this part. To make these bolts follow the, the object, let's just quickly parent them to the object. So pressing uh, Ctrl P. So right now, also this uh, roller wheel, let's parent this. And when we just select the hinge, we can move the whole object. We can also like change the position of the child. I don't like the proportions, we can make this maybe a little bit smaller and maybe just edit it a tiny bit. Let's just uh, stretch this up like that. And now let's add uh, like the tracking beam here. So we can just use this object for our... because it's already the right length. Let's choose a face, duplicate this, separate this as a separate object that already has a metal material. So we can select just the parent objects of the hinge and uh, then extend selection, extend child, or use the shift square bracket shortcut. Hold the on the y axis, copy this so that we have the construction like hanging on the beam here. Cool. And also, let's apply some materials to this. Perhaps the black metal will be okay for that. So, this was called stair metal. 
And if we'd like to copy this material, we can just select all the objects that we want to copy the materials to, and then as the active object, select the object that we want to copy the material from. Copy material to others so that we have all of the objects selected. Uh, they get the material copied from the active object. This is an easy way to like transfer the single shader material uh, from one object to the other. So let's repeat the steps once more for the frames. So let's quickly take care for the glass in the glass panes. Uh, these are uh, this will be all only very simplified shaders because we like won't need any like any sophisticated glass effects just uh, slight reflections so we can take a look at some reference photos how it looks like in this kind of interior shots well, where the glass is like uh, almost fully transparent with just a little uh, reflection effect so um, we'll be uh, faking this a little bit not to make the computer calculate too much so let's quickly set up the shader I already got it prepared here in the notes so just very very simple setup uh, to give us just some slight reflections we have a transparent and a glossy shader set to sharp so that we'll have uh, an almost sharp reflection uh, with a level of 0.2 um, in the mix shader. I've set the roughness to a very small value so that we get a slightly blurry reflections, um, almost sharp but not super sharp. And you can see that we get the slight reflections in the glass panes. So uh, we have the bevel on the staircase, and to to get the bevel into uh, all of the other metal elements that we want, like the beam here, all the other frames. Let's select all of the objects that we're interested in, and then finally, as the active object, let's select the one with the modifier and press Control L, and make links to modifiers. And right now, every object that we selected has the same modifier with the same settings, so we don't have to tweak them manually for each object. So let's redo the uh, metal tube material once more, just pick up a different set of textures. I'll give you the link in the description. So. We can see that this metal is like a little bit more shiny, and I think it, so it will be better. Okay. Good. Now let's make another test render. It's looking uh, better now. I think uh, the metal popped out that's what I really wanted to achieve and and also well the bevels are not really like super visible but uh, right now the render is just like full HD so uh, these are really small bevels and uh, when we make a higher resolution render and with more samples it will pop out and also in different angles view angles this will really matter you can already see that the the edges are not that sharp and they get like these slightly visible but uh, highlights on the edges and we can already see the radiators and the form of them so the shader is much better for this so now let's add some lighting and uh, for distributing like uh, multiple assets of the same type, like we we will have uh, a set of eight or six lamps here hanging from the ceiling, and also I wanted to have a few light bulbs on their own uh, metal ropes here. 
mm, over the bed so mm, for for convenience and placing the assets uh, multiple times and just like maybe tweaking the uh, later on tweaking on just single asset we'll just uh, place them on a separate scene and place them just as a group instance here that's also like uh, efficient in terms of geometry because uh, in the final render only one copy of the objects will be uploaded to the memory and just instanced it's always good to think ahead to optimize the scene as well so we'll just have a new scene we'll call it lights I'll just drop in some assets that I prepared here one is the factory lamp and Edison bulb let's maybe place this one separate layer and place it also in the middle of our coordinate system that's because when we place the asset as an instance it uses the origin of the scene as the origin of the instance and I'll show you quickly how it's modeled so so I started with a with a UV sphere I added this object with an emission material I used the spheric spiral you can edit the curve a little bit have a light source and uh, I used the uh, spherical gradient uh, for the shading so that the uh, bulb has some uneven light and I also use the black body for the color of the emission let's for the time being have some studio lighting for this just to see our object this is a simple simple glass shader also with a mix of transparent and glossy and for the uh, metal rope I use a different modeling technique so this is just a curve a curve with an array modifier as for the material I used also textures from CC0 textures and to be able to see the material uh, and the texturing correctly and the curve we have to go to the texture space uh, and select use UV UVs for mapping now let's place our asset in our final scene and let's add a group instance and we have an Edison bulb group and as you can see it places this link to an empty object let's maybe make a separate layer for the lamps and we can just copy uh, this instance a few times and make a composition out of our bulbs and now let's place our factory lamps here and I want this to be an array let's pick this as an active layer and let's place a plane here let's scale it on the y-axis two times and have a look at here so I have really a set an array of six points 
vertices. So la uh, let's delete only faces. And now we have our grid. We'll use this as an emitter for a particle system. We'll call this particle system lamps and set it to hair and the number you can set strictly to 6 turn on the advanced settings and even distribution vertices and the render setting of the uh, particle system is pick group because we have the lamp as a group and let's choose the factory lamp group right now we can see that there are random elements of this group so we need to select uh, the whole group so right now you can see we have all of our objects appearing here let's also um, make the size as one uh, but the scale is not really right so I think the hair length should be one so let's correct the scaling a little bit uh, and you can do this also here in the render tab uh, let's make the size 0 0.7 and I think that's just pretty the scale that we're going for and you can see that the lamps are facing the direction of the normals you can tweak this setting the rotation and setting the global Y as the axis it works fine and dandy and right now we can just like place uh, the whole set of our lamps and then just as just by editing the grid object we want this to follow the rhythm of the beams there you go you can have full control over the placement of the objects so I think it's pretty cool and pretty convenient for working Yeah, I think it's looking pretty cool. And I guess that's it for this tutorial. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And see you in the next parts, where we'll be focusing on modeling some key assets for the interior, like the bed, for example. So we'll dig into some fabrics, an interesting topic. So see ya, and keep blending.